Good morning and welcome to worship today at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Walkersville, Maryland. We are glad you're here with us today. A few announcements. Today we will be worshiping at Autumn Lake at 2 o'clock. If the Spirit moves you, we'd enjoy for you to join us. VBS again this week at 5.30 where we start with a meal and then work into the craziness of what the kids are all about. So join us if you'd like. And today we welcome the family of Gene Smith, who we are consecrating the new pyramids and the new candles that we have in honor of her. So thank you for being here today. Next week is Ministry Sunday, and we hope that those who are not necessarily tied to one of the ministries or not may stick around afterwards and see where you can help. So that will be immediately following worship next week. July 10th is Youth Sunday, and they will be leading worship and doing all sorts of other good things, and I'm sure Belinda has that pretty well squared away for us, so that will be July 10th. I will be in the woods somewhere camping. Today, Keith and Mike are going to be doing another photo shoot in, um, I think it's the last room, on, or next to last room on the right, down in the education wing. So. If, for our directory, if you need to get your picture taken, they'll be more than happy to oblige you. And Kate has put some flyers, Kay, Kay has put some flyers over on the table underneath the clock for the Sight and Sound Theater trip. So if you're interested, see Kay for any questions or pick up a flyer and we'll get squared away. I think October 13th, right Kay? Yes, the voice from beyond. Now let's quiet our hearts for worship.
Loving and gracious God, it is good to give honor, glory, and thanks to the Lord. In Hebrews 12, we hear, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. The pyramids that have been lovingly and carefully placed on the altar, lectern, and pulpit and the banners that have hung on the walls of the sanctuary through the years have marked the passing of the seasons of the Christian calendar. They have helped us to remember that we are standing on the shoulders of and are surrounded by the great cloud of witnesses who have kept the faith alive. Today, another set of pyramids and torches are presented to be added, consecrated, and commissioned into service in St. Paul's Lutheran Church as a gift given to the glory of God in the memory of Jean Smith. We accept these pyramids and torches as a sacred trust and will use them with reverence and respect. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we consecrate these pyramids and torches to the glory of God. And now let us pray. Loving and gracious God, grant us your blessing as we consecrate this gift of pyramids and torches to your glory, that they may be an enduring witness before all of your people, and that our lives may be consecrated to your service. Send your blessing on these torches and these pyramids which are set apart today, that may they be to us a sign of Christ, light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Send your blessing on these pyramids which we set apart today. May they adorn this house, show us the beauty of holiness, and so proclaim the glory of your majesty. We pray this in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And again, another thanks to the Smith family for the gift that they have given. Now stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
The peace of Christ be with you all. Please share a sign of peace with your neighbor. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
You call us to obey you, and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And please be seated. some familiar songs. Those of you who know me know I like you to sing with me. We shall not be, we shall not be moved. We shall not be, we shall not be moved. Just like a dream standing Someone's crying. 
Someone's praying, Lord. Kumbaya. Someone's praying, Lord. Kumbaya. Someone's praying, Lord. Kumbaya. Oh Lord, Kumbaya. So someone sing. Singing, Lord, kumbaya. Oh, Lord, kumbaya. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here. Come by here, my Lord. Come by here, oh Lord, come by here. The first reading for the third Sunday after Pentecost comes from the 19th chapter of 1 Kings verses 15 to 16 and 19 to 21. Introduction. In the story preceding today's reading, the prophet Elijah flees for his life to the security of God's mountain. There God reveals to Elijah that there is still other faithful people in Israel and commissions him to anoint new leaders, including his own successor, Elisha. The first reading. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king of Aram. You shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. You shall anoint Elisha, son of Zephat, of Abel Mehola, as prophet in your place. So he set out from there, found the son of Zaphat, who was plowing. There were 12 yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the 12. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, go back again, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. Here ends the first reading, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 16, read responsively by the half verse. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my Lord above all. All my delight is in the godly that are in the land. Among those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods, shall not get the Lord is my God. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. 
I have set the Lord always before me. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. For you will not abandon me to the grave. You will show me the path of life. Here ends the psalm. The second reading for today comes from the fifth chapter of Galatians, verses 1 and 13 to 25. Introduction. For Paul, the freedom Christ gives is not permission to do whatever we want. It is an invitation to be what we could not be otherwise. The power and guidance of Christ's Holy Spirit produce a different kind of life, one marked by the fruit of this Holy Spirit. The second reading. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Not only not, do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I have warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Here ends the second reading, the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the ninth chapter. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. 
Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell at my home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The gospel of our Lord. Excuse me. <coughs> and grace be unto you and peace from God the Father Almighty and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from the sky and destroy them, just as Elijah did? How many times in your life have you been in a position where you wanted to rain down fire on someone because of a disagreement or a failure to come to a meeting of the minds? And there have certainly been those circumstances where I've wanted nothing else than for someone else to stumble or fall from some position contrary to what I believed was where they truly belong. Be careful of that smile on your face because there's no doubt in my mind that we have all had these same inclinations. Is it right or justified? Absolutely not. But we are fallen and must every day turn to Jesus to provide us with the graceful path. We, like James and John, often feel that righteous indignation because there is no way we could ever be wrong, and we just want what is right in our own mind. Yet, as James and John, we forget who we are following and the example Jesus is consistently laying before us. Dust off your cloak and move on. There's nothing to see here. Now, much like the tack Jesus takes with the Gerasene community, he does not confront or push his agenda on those who are not yet ready to put their faces towards Jerusalem or the cross. That community was fearful because of the power exhibited in Jesus, and in similar fashion, the Samaritan community doesn't want anything to do with someone who is already focused on his mission. Jesus is still preparing the disciples for what they must do when he leaves them, and he reinforces for them that the path to God does not come by returning hate for hate. We do not have to resort to violence out of fear, and we do not have to need to control those around us to flourish. Power and might do not need to be our every answer, but a sense of courage, compassion, and trust are what rules the day. And I recall being on the front lines of some very heated and violent demonstrations during my past career, and sometimes just stepping back from the face-to-face engagements was all it took to take the fire away from the moment and let cooler heads prevail. On one such occasion, there was mistrust on the part of the demonstrators, for they felt their voice was not being heard. As we moved in to evaluate the area for compliance with park and health regulations, a group climbed to the top of one of the statues and asserted they were not coming down without a fight. They were about 20 to 25 feet in the air, and people on both sides would definitely have gotten hurt had this situation escalated any farther. As I spoke with the group, I removed my helmet to present a less domineering persona and had conversation to hear what it was going to take to have them come down peacefully. They were concerned I was going to take their tent of dreams and that it would never be seen again. I assured them this was not the case, and if they came down, they could keep their tent and not face any further action. And after about two hours, they came down, packed up their tent, and we went about the remainder of our day. We didn't agree with each other's actions, but we were able to have respectful conversation, allowing for a resolution where nobody was hurt. And there are certainly those times in our church life when we have similar interactions. 
though I hope they never come to the point where one of you is occupying the steeple and refusing to come down. There are many things we are passionate about in our lives, and many of those revolve around how we are church together. We have our favorite hymns, our worship practices, and how we believe our church should be run, but we can't always be on the same page. And I believe that is something fundamental to our being community. And I will paraphrase one of my favorite sayings from General George Patton saying, if everyone is thinking alike, then someone's not thinking. Healthy conversation, respectful debate, and loving reception are what rules the day, but sometimes we may have to walk away and dust off our cloak and move on. And there may be some issues to which we may never find resolution, which is a terrible travesty in our lives. And many of these may seem trivial to one person, but to another they are the pinnacle of their life. I mean, we must respect this and understand there will be points when we agree to disagree, though these points should not take our focus away from the kingdom of God and our service as Christians in our community. John reminds us in this passage that we should focus our main attention on Jesus and keep a straight path to where we are going. And I believe this is evident in how I came to be here and my call to leave what I was doing and enjoyed, to embark on this journey with Jesus at the forefront. And when I first began my discern, to discern my call, I was excited at the prospect of taking on this challenge, yet I was not sure where it was going to lead or how I was going to get there. In 2007, I felt the call of the Holy Spirit to seek out ministry, but I had no idea what that meant. I thought it meant me heading to seminary, getting an education, and psh, there you go. But my first journey to the seminary was one of disappointment, as when I met with the president who, after some time, asked if I was truly ready. I thought I was. But as it turns out, I was like the men in our gospel today. I was focused on things other than Jesus, even though I had him in my heart. And although I felt the Holy Spirit nudging me in the direction, I was much like Moses, who doubted he could sway Pharaoh on the behalf of the Israelites. Or Gideon, plead, as Gideon pleaded, Sir, how can I deliver Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. I certainly protested, as Jeremiah did. Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. And for sure, I fit right in with Isaiah, who said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. My life pretty much mirrored all of these prophets, and it wasn't until I filled in for my pastor one Sunday that I understood, some seven years later, that it was possible for someone like me to find direction at the hand of the Holy Spirit. One evening I received a call from my pastor asking how I was doing. And this was a bit odd, and I asked, well, how are you doing? And he replied that he was not doing too well and that he was in the hospital. They had not determined what was wrong with him, and he asked me to fill in for him the next day. And as you can imagine, I was a little bit leery of the prospect as I had never done this before. The conversation went on a bit with Sue prodding me to help Dave. I inquired if I would have to do a sermon. And the reply was that he was hoping I would. I said, well, maybe a hymn sing. But I eventually relented to Sue's prodding, much like any good husband does, and agreed to lead worship the next morning. I spent quite a bit of time that evening trying to figure out how to say something meaningful 
And as Pastor Kevin would offer, often warn me, to not get burned at the stake for heresy. Inasmuch as Sue will tell you she married a policeman and not a pastor, she truly was one of the influence that propelled me to take the straight path and follow the furrow. She encouraged me to help our pastor out, even though I had no idea what I was doing and certainly had never written a sermon before. But much like James and John, we don't always get it right. And we run headlong into not thinking about the consequences of our actions and how they might impact someone else. We may have the best of intentions in our hearts, but must recognize there may be a different way to accomplish that which we are passionate about. And it's okay to step back and ponder the problem or situation at hand. And it sounds so cliche, but the true fact is that we must think about what would Jesus do and not fall into the trap of allowing our own agenda to get in the way. We are fortunate to have the example of Jesus in our lives, one that affords us opportunities to see a different path. Yet a path, when we are ready, leads us to proclaim God to the world. In those times when we fail to listen and get ahead of ourselves, God is still showing us the alternative in Jesus, still forgiving us for Jesus' sake, and still promising to use us to care for our neighbor when we yield to God's irresistible love. Set your face on God, and the rest will fall into place. Amen.
we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to, ju to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. God of faithfulness, we set the face of your church firmly on you. Rooted in your self-giving love, may the church find freedom in loving our neighbors. God, in your mercy. God of gentleness, strengthen the earth's ability to heal. Where there are dangerous storms, bring calm. Where there are destructive fires, bring rain. Protect homes, habitats, and livelihoods threatened by climate disasters. God, in your mercy. God of peace, guide all who govern, that they place the good of their citizens above self-promotion. Anoint leaders of nations with your spirit of neighborly love. Protect refugees and all who live under tyranny or conflict. God, in your mercy. God of kindness, reveal your healing presence to all who are sick or dying, especially Pastor Dave, Kelly, Merle, Maggie, Marie, Nancy, Sky Ann, Tyrell, Emily, Vicki, Bruce, Bob W., Jacob, Bob, Brandon, Joy, Dave, those on our prayer list and those whom we name in our hearts are out loud. Uphold those who grieve, support the needs of any who are unemployed, hungry, or have nowhere to lay their heads. God in your mercy. God of love. Attend to those struggling with addiction, depression, or uncontrolled anger. Provide support systems and loving companions as they work toward health, that they may rest in hope and know the fullness of your joy in your presence. God, in your mercy. God of joy, we give thanks for all who have died and now celebrate the inheritance of life in you. Keep their examples of faithfulness always before us, that we trust your promises in life and in death. God, in your mercy. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these prayers spoken and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Through your Son, our Lord. Amen. As always, we're thankful for the gifts you share with your church 
There are ways to give. You can put it in the plate at either one of the entrances to the door, mail it in, send it in, or electronically, but we are always thankful for the gifts you share. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us at all at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body, that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, taking, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Gathered into one with the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is set, the meal is prepared. Come and eat.
Give me a minute, Jeff. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the res resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always.
I'd like to thank Ginny for sharing her gifts with us today, and also again to the Smith family. Go in peace. Love your neighbor.